Jonathan Kent, the son of Superman, is ready to enter the next great chapter of his life, but before he can fully move on, he must deal with a ghost from his past. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Adventures of Superman, John Kent. Issue number one, the kickoff to a brand new miniseries from Tom Taylor and find out what happens next together, shall we? Alrighty then, so as we join this brand new issue, they actually pick up on a story thread that was left behind at the end of the last John book. You'll recall that somewhere out there in the multiverse, a killer was on the loose knocking off Superman. In this issue, we discover right away that that killer is none other than Ultraman, the evil Superman and member of the crime syndicate from Earth 3. We actually get a very disturbing little scene wherein he ends up cornering another multiversal Superman and asks for his final words, only to be disgusted when he realizes, ugh, it's always Lois. <laughs> now we transition from there to a much happier scene. We're reminded that John Kent is actually very much enjoying getting to live a normal human life again, following the world forgetting Clark's secret identity as Superman and by extension John's own identity as the son of Superman. Here's the truly ironic rub though, while John doesn't have to hide who he is anymore, his boyfriend Jay Nakamura actually does. Not only does the world still remember that he's the crusading journalist and corrupt nation toppler known as the truth, but they also very much still know that he is Superman's son's boyfriend. Meaning that he's actually the one who has to hide in the relationship. The couple's happy out ends up getting interrupted when all of Earth's satellites start falling out of orbit, set to cause unknowable amounts of death, destruction, and chaos unless Superman can get in there and put a stop to it, and because Clark, Supergirl, and all of the other Super family members are actually away on other world business right now, it looks like this is a job for John and John alone. A shame, too, is John could really have used the help right now, as this is one of those situations where even Superman is tested being everywhere all at once. In fact, the young Superman ends up pushing himself so hard that he once again feels that electricity deep inside himself. Again, at the end of the previous John series, he had developed a new power. And when we last saw him in that special little Lazarus Planet one-shot backup story, he had also once again started feeling the blue electricity inside himself, but so far those powers have yet to fully 100% manifest themselves. Even though all the promotional material, both for this new miniseries and for Lazarus Planet, showed John with those powers and in the electric blue Superman costume. Now, John tries his best to stop the falling satellites and he manages to make a pretty good dent in the chaos. Here's the thing though, he actually does end up getting some super help at the last second, only it's from the last person he could ever expect. It's Val Zod, the Superman of Earth 2, everyone. This is actually the first time John and Val are meeting each other and Val admits, hey, you know, don't worry about the fact that my last name is Zod. Believe it or not, I'm a Superman from another universe only for John to go, yeah, I know. I kind of already scanned you on a molecular level, and well, Superman from other worlds, we all kind of just share a few things in common. The book also has a funny little bit about the two sidestepping, not trusting each other, and fighting each other, going, yeah, when heroes do that, when they're that sort of untrusting, it just kind of makes the whole community look bad, huh? It sure is nice that we're mature enough to use our words. Still, though, John has to do his due diligence, and Val admits that there actually is someone here on the Prime Earth who can vouch for him, and that person turns out to be none other than Mr. Terrific. Yeah, that's right, Tom Taylor is picking up on a piece of continuity that I think every other writer under the sun forgot, and that is that Holt actually did travel back and forth between Prime Earth and Earth 2, and he actually is pretty well acquainted with the cast of that Earth 2 series. But even more surprisingly, too, the Red Tornado of Earth 2, the Lady One, has actually also been living here on Prime Earth the whole time. Once all the introductions are made, it's here that Val Zod has to finally open up to John and his mom Lois about why exactly he's here right now, and as you might have guessed, it involves Ultraman jumping Earths and killing Superman. Apparently, at some point, he managed to develop some kind of device that actually allows him to weaken other Superman enough that he can actively kill them. Obviously, this revelation about who the perpetrator is cuts John pretty damn deep. After all, it was Ultraman who imprisoned him on Earth 3 for all those years, stole his child Childhood, leaving him with a myriad of emotional and mental scars of which he is still very much living with today. Val also admits that he came to talk to John in the here and now, knowing full well that Superman wasn't on Earth because he thinks John is the only one who can actually help him defeat Ultraman. Mainly because he is so different from his father and hopefully whatever new trick Ultraman has cooked up won't actually work on him and John, assumedly because they are Superman, but they aren't actually Clarks. Obviously, Lois' 
pretty worried about her son knowing full well what going up against Ultraman would mean, and because John is such a good person, he's not going to turn down this request for help. Even if on some deep secret level he might want to, it's also here that Lois is hit with the revelation that this red tornado of Earth 2 actually is that world's Lois, and that she knows a thing or two about the pain and loss of losing your world's Clark and what that could actually do, not just to you, but to everyone else around you, and that John could very well not only save this world from that fate, he could save many worlds from that fate. And to think, all John has to do in this situation is go on a multiversal journey far from home to finally face his greatest personal demon head on. And it's on that note right there the comic comes to an end, everyone. So that was Adventures of Superman John Kent issue number one, and I gotta say, this new Tom Taylor series is off to a really strong start. In fact, in many ways, this new miniseries feels like the grand culmination of everything that Taylor has been writing at DC. You got his recent John Kent Superman stuff. You got callbacks to the new 52 Earth 2 stories. And as the promotion material has already spoiled, yes indeed, Val and John will be taking a trip to the Injustice universe where they will be coming face to face with Injustice Superman. Arguably Taylor's most famous contribution to the DC multiverse. And honestly, I think my favorite thing about it is that it all just feels really organic in terms of storytelling. One of the best things Taylor did when it came to writing John is to not shy away from what Ultraman and by extension Bendis did in that story, robbing him of those important formative years with his parents and how it really informs how he lives his life. And now John seems like he's actually going to get the chance to have some real restorative justice, a reckoning with the man who took so much away from him and who is threatening to take so much away from other worlds. It's real solid superhero drama that basically writes itself and I can't wait to see how it all plays out. Overall, I'd give this issue a much deserved 8.5 out of 10, and I can't wait to see where we go from here. Hey there, everyone. It's your old pal, Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content, too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and, well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.